Okay, so we've been talking about position graphs and velocity graphs and talking about the fact that they tell us the same story of motion. Um, this is now going to introduce you to another way to represent motion, tell the same story just in a, diff a slightly different way. So what you guys see here are uh, several images I downloaded uh, offline a couple of years ago of something called the stroboscopic effect. Um, and you guys have probably seen pictures like this uh, in magazines like for ac action shots or like, you know, a golfer's swing or something like that. Um, and these pictures are meant to convey something about how an object is moving. And there's actually a lot of information about the motion of each object just by looking at these pictures all at once. Okay? Um, this can be done by, like, doing, um, using, like, some kind of clever camera techniques. Uh, or you can just take a whole bunch of pictures, like, you know, click, 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 click of something moving and then, like, kind of paste them all together in layers using Photoshop. These specific pictures uh, were taken with, like, a camera technique uh, where they used a flash. So if you notice, the background is all, it's dark, um, and you have an object moving through space. And they basically open the shutter up so it's going to capture any light that comes into the camera and expose that, and it'll show up on the film. Um, the way that they lit these things up was not with just a, a light that they turned on, they used a flash, and so it was like strobing, just like, um, um, what are they called, strobe lights, you know, like you're at a dance or something. So they flash on and they flash off, sometimes like maybe, you know, a couple times a second, but it's a, a consistent amount of time between flashes. And so if this, let's say this was taken outside probably at night, and without the flash on, you couldn't see the squirrel. And so it flashed once when the squirrel was starting to jump, and then between flashes, you can't see the squirrel. Here's where it is during the next flash, then you can't see it. And so it's this fluid motion from beginning to end, but the flash went off one, two, three, four, five times. And maybe it was flashing once every tenth of a second, which means this tells us a couple things. It tells us that it took the squirrel one, two, three, four tenths of a second to jump from one branch to the other. and since the squirrel shows up, it tells us exactly where the squirrel was. So we could even measure this and find out it went a certain distance in a tenth of a second and calculate exactly how fast the squirrel was going. Okay. If we look at this watch, like the swinging back and forth here, you can see that between these two flashes, there's not a lot of distance. Between these two flashes at the bottom, there's more distance. And so if it covers more distance, in the same amount of time that tells us that the watch at the bottom of the swing must have been moving faster. right? So um, using this idea, um, here's another, uh, another example. So this is just a picture of uh, a skateboarder kind of like weaving through some cones. Um, we're going to use dots and arrows to uh, represent the motion of something, in this case moving at a, about a constant velocity, and we call this new representation a motion map. So uh, again, I'm going to give you guys a re that reading which kind of talks this through. So, so on a motion map, let's get, let's get rid of that. Let's say we had a, a stroboscopic picture of a car moving to the right, and it's you, it's moving because every successive flash, um, we can see it move more to the right. And Whenever we're doing this, we're always going to assume there's one second that passes in between um, each car. And so the first image is going to be when we start our timer. So it's going to be at a time of zero. The next time we see the object, one second will have passed. And so this is going to be where it is at, or its position at one second. This will be its position at two seconds. And finally, this will be its position at three seconds. Well, if I ask you to draw this, like this tells us something about the motion, its position, and we can calculate its velocity, but it would take a lot of time to like draw those cars each time. So we're going to simplify it. We're just going to use like a, a line to represent like the direction of motion, and this is going to be like our axis. Remember, x represents position, so this is really like a number line like you did in the where's the buggy lab. And instead of drawing cars, we're just going to use dots and arrows. The dots are going to represent the position of the object, like physically where it is at equal uh, intervals of time. So the middle of the car is about here, so the dot is at that position. The middle of the car is about here, so you can see that this is where the position is on our number line. 
because with the dots right there. And the arrows are going to represent velocity. And remember, velocity tells us two things about an object's motion. It tells us the size and the direction. And so the arrows have to tell us size and direction. Uh, the length of the arrow will tell us how fast it's going. And obviously the direction that the arrow is pointing will tell us uh, what direction it's moving in. So let's look at how a motion map would look different if the car was doing something a little bit different. So let's assume that the car is still moving to the right, uh, but it's now moving faster. So if we looked at what the images looked like, the car would look like this. Since it's traveling faster, it's going to travel farther each second, and so there's going to be more space between the dots. So we still use a dot to represent the position of the car along our number line, and they're spaced out farther because it's traveling farther each one second of time. And the arrows now have to be longer because it has a larger velocity at that position. If the car is going in the reverse direction, this is what the series of pictures would look like of the car. And our motion map will look like this. Dots represent the position of the car. And our longer arrows are now just facing in the opposite direction, showing that the car is moving in the negative direction. So let's look at a little bit more complicated example. And we're going to start with being given a, a position versus time graph, which shows something moving and doing three specific different things. And then I'll show you what the, velocity, the motion map looks like uh, during each point of the motion. So the first part of the motion involves the object uh, starting in a position of 0 meters and moving up to a position of 4 meters and does that within 4 seconds. So that means the object is moving at one meter per second. So we have, since the object starts at a position of zero meters, we have to have our first dot start at a position of zero meters, and then one dot for the position every following second. So for the first part of that motion, it looks like this. Our dot for uh, a time of zero seconds, and here that second dot is at a, oops, a time of one second. This dot is at a time of two seconds. This dot is at a time of three seconds. And this is dot, dot is at a time of four seconds. <clears throat> so there's five dots here because to show that you start at time zero, time one, time two, time three, and time four. So now the object stays at 4 meters, it stops, comes to rest. And so we have to show on our motion map that it stays at the same position for a total of two more seconds. So this is what we do. We put one dot to show that it stays there for one second and an additional dot to show that it stays there for a total of two seconds. So we can say that this dot is after five seconds has passed and this dot, the object is at a, that position of 4 meters at 6 seconds. For the last part of the motion, we see that the object is now moving backwards. It goes from 4 down to 3, down to 2 meters, and it does that from a total of 6 seconds to 10 seconds. So in 4 seconds, it's moving backwards 2 meters. And so this is what that looks like on the motion map. So each second later, it's going to be moving a half a meter back because the slope of this line is negative one-half of a meter per second. So at seven seconds, it's at three and a half meters. At eight seconds, it's at three meters. At nine seconds, it's at a position of two and a half meters. And finally, at 10 seconds, it's at its final position of two meters. And this is the description of the motion. So if you're given a position graph, you can see how you should be able to get the motion map, which tells the same story, and vice versa. If you're given a motion map, you should be able to make the position versus time graph. So these are interchangeable, and you should be able to go from one to the other.